on states of matter. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this because hopefully you remember learning about a lot of this background knowledge when we talked about energy and kind of the physics portion of this class. And so hopefully you'll kind of see how this all carries over and all interconnects, which I think is really, really cool. One of my favorite things about science. So just a little review. Again, if you remember this, you are already 10 steps ahead. Um, remember thermal energy. We had a whole concept on it. It is the sum of kinetic and potential energy of particles in an object. Remember, kinetic energy is energy in motion, and potential energy is stored energy. And so we can actually relate this to matter, specifically how matter physically changes states due to the motion of the particles that make up matter. And there's a theory that kind of explains and summarizes what we know to be true about this connection I'm talking about. And it's called the kinetic molecular theory. And here are the three points to it. First, all matter is made of small particles. Atoms, ions, molecules, etc. That's what we're talking about here. Those particles are in constant, random motion. And this motion, it causes them to collide with each other in the container that they are in. And so this, um, this is really important for understanding solids, liquid, gas, states of matter, which is what we're going to be talking about today. So one more thing that's a review, but hopefully you remember, is temperature. Remember we said cold doesn't exist. There's only um, heat. But the, our actual formal definition of temperature is specifically, it's a measure of the average kinetic energy. How crazily are those particles moving in an object? So you're higher, the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy, so the more the particles are moving. So think about solids, liquids, and gases. All right, I think this helps think about water. When water is solid, it is ice. So that is at a very low temperature, so it has low kinetic energy, so the particles aren't moving very much in the ice. Liquids exist at a higher temperature, so thus more kinetic energy and more motion of the particles. Water vapor, gas, like think about steam coming out of your shower, that exists at a really high temperature. Um, so there's the most kinetic energy and the most motion of the particles. And so this is what we need to be able to do to make connections between particle motion and particle energy and the states of matter that they are in. So there's three main states of matter, and we're going to talk about those first, and then we're going to talk about two lesser known states of matter. So we're going to talk about solids, liquids, and gases first, the big three. So a solid is known as having a fixed volume and a fixed shape. So the shape and the volume of a solid isn't changing. Particles are held very tightly together and it's a very rigid structure. Notice how um, like organized, I guess that's the best word, um, these particles are in this structure. They have very low kinetic energy because they're at a lower, they exist at lower temperatures. And so because of this, the particles are so tightly packed together that according to kinetic molecular theory, they have to still be moving. So they are moving, but they're almost just like vibrating um, between each other because, again, they really can't move that much. Think about if you were like in a crowd and you're of people and you're all really packed together, like at a big football game or something, and you're all trying to move. You're like shuffling down um, a flight of stairs or something. You're just kind of bumping into each other. That's what we would see in a solid. This is different from a liquid. So again, a liquid, we're adding heat to, to make a solid become a liquid. So it's getting warmer. There's going to be more kinetic energy. Liquids have fixed volumes, but their shape changes based on the container that they're in. So, you know, if they're in a tall and skinny container, they're going to appear tall and skinny. If they're in a, um, a long, flat container, they're going to appear long and flat. Particles have more kinetic energy in liquids than they do in solids. So because of that, they're able to move a little bit more. So we would say that the particles kind of flow or slide past each other, which kind of makes sense because when you think of a liquid, like, pouring it, it, like, flows. So I think that's easy for me to remember. All right, and then we have gases. They have no fixed volume or shape, meaning it's really hard to, like, 
contain them and measure the volume of a gas because it's not fixed and their shape is not fixed either. If confined it, like in a container or in a space, the gas particles basically spread out. We call this diffusion. They spread throughout the container they are in. We'll talk about diffusion a lot in biology because it's a pretty important um, transport process that happens in cells. But I always think, like, think about how um, if you make bacon and the smell is super strong in your kitchen, but then it kind of diffuses, that smell spreads throughout your entire house, so your hot entire house smells a little bit like bacon. That's how gases work when we say that they spread out or they diffuse. They have the highest kinetic energy of solid, liquid, and gas. And because of that, the energy is actually high enough to overcome any forces that are holding them together. So they're actually just freely moving. They're not sliding past each other or vibrating like in a solid, but they're really freely moving independently from each other. Now, a little like kind of side note we're going to do is on these two other states of matter, you're really not going to be expected to know all these details about them, but I think they're really interesting and I think it's worth mentioning to you. And then we'll get back to more about solids, liquids, and gases. Um, but the first is plasma. This is matter, and this is a little bit harder to understand and visualize, but it's made of positively and negatively charged particles and they have insanely high kinetic energy. And the reason why I feel like this has to be mentioned is because plasma is actually the most common form of matter in the universe. So it's kind of, we're not really doing states of matter justice if we don't mention plasma because it's the most common. This is what makes up stars and neon lights and auroras like we see um, here in this picture of the northern lights, which is so beautiful. Um, obviously, stars and stuff have gases in them too, but plasma is also a really, really big part of it and a huge part of the universe. Now, this other one is super interesting because it's only been discovered in like the last 20 years. And these are Bose Einstein um, or Bose Einstein condensates. And this is when atoms are super cooled to such a low temperature. So we're going the opposite extreme here. So it's called, it's almost, they're almost getting to absolute zero temp. That they form something called a super atom. And scientists actually created these condensates in 1995. And all par particles in this super atom are at the same energetic state. They're all the same. And they can actually slow down light that passes through it. Um which is kind of interesting. And so you might be like, what are these pictures of? These are pictures of black holes because these condensates are used to simulate the conditions in a black hole, which I think is pretty cool. So this is something we've made in lab and we've been able to kind of try to understand a little bit more about what the heck black holes are because they are super, super intriguing. So just want to mention those two things um, because I just thought they were too interesting to pass up. But back to kind of the traditional big three states of matter, it's really important that you not only know what the three are, but that you understand how um, matter changes between the different states. So when particles gain or lose thermal energy, they're undergoing a state change. And this is a physical change. Remember, we learned about physical and chemical in concept two, but this is physical because the identity of the matter is still the same. Now this is one of the most easily confused concepts we learn about in chemistry. People just think, oh, ice and liquid wa water are, that's a chemical change. No, it's not chemical. It's still water. Ice is just solid H2O. Liquid water is just liquid H2O. Water vapor or steam is just gaseous H2O. All right, so this is a physical change. The identity is not changing. And two um, kind of vocabulary terms I want you to know are heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. So the heat of fusion is, is an amount of energy that is needed to turn a solid into a liquid at its boiling point. So this is the amount of heat that we must have obtained in order to get a solid, or excuse me, at its melting point, I misspoke. But this is the amount of heat we must have obtained in order for there to be enough energy for that solid to become a liquid at an object's melting point. 
So when heat's added to a solid, we know it has more kinetic energy. So particles vibrate faster and faster until they are able to start moving apart more and more, and then they eventually transition into sliding past each other, which is the liquid state. And this is because the heat diffusion has been obtained. Similarly is the heat of vaporization. This is the same idea, but it's just the amount of energy needed to turn a liquid into a gas at its boiling point. So we actually have a diagram that I really love and that you'll definitely need to be able to label that summarizes how matter changes states and what it's called when it changes from one to another. So I'm going to use red arrows to show energy being added um, and I'm going to show blue arrows to show energy being removed. So first we have melting. So um, solid melting into liquid, it, or solid becoming a liquid is considered it's melting. Whereas if liquid becomes a solid, it's considered freezing. For vaporization, we have a liquid becoming a gas. It's gaining energy. That would be, we would say it's vaporizing. Whereas a gas becoming a liquid is condensation. Oh, we got a, the colors wrong in here. I'll switch it um, on the notes we'll do in class. But a gas becoming a solid, all right, that's removing energy. That should be blue. That's called deposition. This is like um, so, um, in the atmosphere. There's some sub-freezing temperatures that can instantly convert water vapor to ice or frost. And then sublimation, this is solid to gas. Again, that should be a red arrow showing adding energy. But this is... Um, like dry ice. It's such a drastic change that it goes immediately from solid to gas. All right, um, zooming in on a couple of those because I just want to make sure you know some distinctions. One is um, about vaporization. This is the phase or state transition from liquid to gas and it occurs to, um, that we saw back here and it occurs two different ways. There's evaporation and boiling. So when something is evaporating, this is a cause by a pressure change. It's only happening at the surface. Boiling is what's going on throughout the entire liquid, and it's happening because of a temperature change. Um, so just make sure you kind of know the distinction between those words. And then the last thing I want to look at about states of matter um, is heating curves. A heating curve is a diagram that shows the state um, transitions a substance goes through as heat or thermal energy we could say is being added to it and I will really want you to be able to um, label diagrams like this label these heating curves so we are going to look at one um, now together so we're going to look at a heating curve for water so notice that um, the y-axis is measuring temperature, and in this case, degrees Celsius, and then the x-axis would be measuring the amount of heat absorbed um, or energy absorbed, that kind of thing. So, anything below zero degrees Celsius is solid ice. All right, so this whole thing, this whole slam the mud, anything below zero is going to be solid. At zero degrees Celsius, that is the melting point. That is when melting starts to occur because we've obtained the heat of fusion. Above 0 degrees Celsius until 100 is liquid. So like 20 degrees Celsius, that's just really cold liquid water. 80 degrees Celsius, that's really warm liquid water. Still liquid, anything in this range. When it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, though, that is when it starts boiling. Okay, It's going to be able to boil because there's enough energy for that to happen. And then anything above 100 is gas. It's going to be steam. All right, so a couple more things you need to know. So that melting point is able to happen because they've obtained the heat of fusion. And then the boiling point is able to happen because of the heat of vaporization. All right, we are going to practice this now.